Tom Johnny. Just a quick bit of housekeeping. I've been sprinkling Easter eggs in my videos since episode one, season one. So I'm interested to see if any of you have noticed. So leave a message down in the comments below and let's see if you're observant enough to pick it up. And now it's time for pink noise again. You'll have to excuse me. I'm coming off of a brutal cold. When you look at the tutorials online about mixing and mastering your own music, a lot of them say don't. The reasoning is, is that you're too close to your own music to make objective mixing and mastering decisions. That's great and stuff, but who's got time and money to throw at a professional mixing and mastering engineer to get your song released? Also, I find it very telling that a lot of the people telling you that you can't mix and master your own music are dudes selling their mixing and mastering as a service. But what if we could change that? What if there was some way that we could somehow make more objective decisions about our music? So to start, we're gonna try an experiment together. On the screen is this nice big green square. And if you're colorblind, I truly do apologize for this. I want you to stare at the square. I want you to stare at the X in the middle of the square as I'm talking. Now what's going on is that I'm fatiguing the neurons in your brain that are responsible for perceiving the color green and also for inhibiting the colors blue and red. And that's how our perceptive system seems to work. It's not just about seeing a particular color, it's also about not seeing another color. So just as much as the green cones in your eye send messages to neurons that say, hey, I'm green, it also sends messages like, hey, I'm not blue. Hey, I'm not red. Now you've probably already seen this kind of trick before, so you might have an inkling of what's coming next. Bam. The score that you're currently seeing is not only not there, but that color that you're perceiving is an impossible color. That color does not exist in nature. You will not see a thing with that color. In fact, if you were to come back to this video and go to this spot, you would just see a blank screen of pink. So this works because the neurons in your visual system get tired out. What if we could apply the same thing to mixing? Now, this came out of a conversation that I had with local luminary in the epic ambient battle, which as you may or may not recall, ended up with a lot of doom. doom. So anyway, we were talking back and forth about pink noise and its effect on the brain. And it occurred to me that you could use pink noise as a way to reset your brain during the process of mixing a song, just as the pink square appears because of the fatigue of that single input so would your own piece of music be fatiguing to your own ears on all different kinds of levels. See, when you perceive a piece of music, it starts at the basics, right? You've got a sound, that sound has got a frequency, and that's kind of base level perception of sound. But it starts to bubble up higher into the brain. The next level then takes those sounds and starts to split them up into timbres or instruments, if you will. And the very act of identifying an instrument like a guitar or TB-303 actually starts engaging the memory and emotional centers of your brain immediately. On top of that, there's a level of your brain that's trying to figure out the pitches and more importantly, the intervals and how all the intervals relate to one another making more connections into your memories, and again, making more connections to your emotions. And finally, on this big tower, there's an entire chunk of your brain that's responsible for determining the rhythm of a piece of music and anticipating when the next beat is. And as I've mentioned in an earlier video, that expectation modulation resolution interplay really is what drives the emotion and the groove of a piece of music. So what if you could short circuit not all of that, but a lot of that. In the middle of your next mix down, after you make a decision, listen to a minute of pink noise and reset your brain and then hit play and see how that change sounds and then keep going. Methodically changing a thing, listening, pink noise, listen again and see if it helps. Then this will help short circuit some of that emotional attachment that you have to your own music and help you make better mixing and mastering decisions. I'd really love to hear about your experiences in trying this technique out. Uh, send your comments, questions in the doobly-doo down below. So essentially, this blast of pink noise technique is fatiguing all your neurons and giving everything a bit of a reset. And in fact, it might help to then listen to a minute's worth of silence right afterwards. I tried it on a track. 
and I felt like it helped. But it was really just one experiment. I'd really love to hear about your experiences in trying this technique out. Uh, send your comments, questions in the doobly-doo down below. And until next time, remember, science without sanity is mad. <laughs>